Uh, and uh, John Heilman, as we talk about how time and again Joe Biden's career was almost over, I can't help but go back uh, and, and, and think about Richard Ben Kramer writing about Joe Biden. So many beautiful things about his 88 campaign, which ended very early. It was a, a terrible campaign, a flawed campaign. And at one point, um, when he was he's speaking after a speech, his head was splitting so hard, hurting so hard, he had to run outside and literally stick his head in the snow to, to, to try to dull the pain. Of course, that was because uh, he was about to uh, about to have an aneurysm. Um, but but time and again, uh, he he, he, he had a, a political collapse and then a rebirth. And uh, he always asked uh, after the 88 campaign, he could he could never he could never figure out why it ended the way it ended. He believed that it was God's will that one day he would be president of the United States. And that happened in 87, 88. His life, of course, saved uh, famously with with that operation. Uh, but it would be it'd be another generation before he fulfilled that dream. Against all odds, I must say, after uh, Iowa and New Hampshire fulfilled that dream and became president of the United States, which again uh, shows uh, it's just uh, outlines a remarkable political life he has had all these years. I. Um... I like being able to correct John Meacham occasionally. Um, he did. There were some votes cast for Joe Biden in 2008. Um, he competed in the Iowa caucuses and dropped out, uh, I think, a day or two afterwards because he, he had done so poorly in Iowa. But he had like 2 percent. Yes. Think. Well, yes. He, he, was very, yes yeah. he was. It was a, a, it's important in this context because he after 88, he thought about running uh, in 2000. He thought about running in 2004. Right. He kept thinking that he that he had a, a presidential run in him. And so then he ran in 2008. He made a, a, a comment uh, on literally the first day of his campaign about Barack Obama that was seen as being uh, condescending. Um, and, and it sort of blew up his campaign literally in one day yeah. uh, in the New York Observer. Uh, and that was the end. The donors looked and said, we're not going to be with Joe Biden. He, and it was a going nowhere campaign from the first from the first that that by, that Obama chose him to be vice president and that he then served uh, Obama with such uh, an, an older uh, white man serving a young African-American man, which gave him great credibility with a lot of black voters and would come back to boost him when he ran in, in 2000, uh, when he ultimately ran in 2020. All of that is an extraordinary, an extraordinary political life. And yet, I think it's right to say that if you think about uh, what the meaning of yesterday was, is that the, the above the fold on Joe Biden's uh, uh, obituary one day will now be that he uh, there's a couple, a couple lines. One, the first will be that in the first uh, real authoritarian threat to the United States, Joe Biden stood up to it in 2020. Uh, and then in 2024, when faced with it again, made the courageous decision that he was not the, he didn't have what it took in the end to beat it back and, and made this self-sacrificing decision. Those are the, the uh, will now be the political headlines. One act of, of where he defeat, be, be back authoritarianism, another where he yielded to have the Democratic Party have a chance to beat back the second attempt at authoritarianism. Right. I think those are going to be the headlines uh, for him. And that's why yesterday's uh, decision was, I think, the right one. Right. Uh, and one that will be remembered kindly by history. Well, and, and again, how one is doing in the public opinion polls when they leave office is not how history looks at them 20, 30, 50, 100 years from now, because Rev. Harry Truman left with 22 percent approval rating. Almost every historian considers him to be a near great historian for all he did with NATO, for all he did with the Truman Doctrine, containment, basically starting the Cold War, but framing it in a way that the United States would beat back Soviet authoritarianism. George H.W. Bush, another one-term president who will be seen, if not already, as a near great president because what he did when the Soviet Union collapsed, when the wall fell, the way he bound uh, Europe together, um, he will be seen that way, as will Joe Biden, who will be seen, I think, by most historians as a person that beat back authoritarianism by running in 2000 and did his part by deciding to step down in 2004. And like Cincinnatus, 
leaving power voluntarily and going home. No doubt about it. I, I remember as a teenager, we were marching uh, against the war in Vietnam and LBJ, Lyndon Johnson was the enemy. And uh, it, in, 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 in the uh, looking back now to history, Lyndon Johnson was one of the greatest presidents for the things I believed in and for the country that ever existed. And I think that is why I, I pointed out in my piece that Joe Biden deserves credit now. When you look at the fact that we're sitting here this morning with the leading candidate, according to the polls, a convicted felon and one that has been found to have sexually molested a woman. I mean, if, if, if he does not try to get out of the debates and, and you know, Joe, I uh, mean, uh, Donald Trump and I both come from uh, New York and Brooklyn. We call him a, a, a punk in the streets. I don't think he wants to debate. Kamala Harris think, because think I think he'll be afraid to debate. Oh, he's a political Kamala punk. Harris? There's no doubt about it. Really? And I think that if his friend uh, was promoting the uh, the about uh, Don King, it would be the prosecutor versus the felon. That's how you would promote it. <laughs> and she should open Don up. King. Watch that. Yeah. Don King. And Don well, he King used the picture yeah. of Don King and I had him in his yeah. intro at oh, the convention. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Don should promote the debate. The felon versus the prosecutor. Yeah. And she should open up by saying, uh, I'd like to first ask my opponent, did he get permission from his parole officer to be at the debate this evening? Okay, I'll tell you what, somebody, Paige Don King, we have a packed show this yeah. morning, Mika.